Hello, my name is Sarah Grace Taylor. I cover city and county government for the Times Free Press, and I'm here with Chris Long, who's running for mayor. Mr. Long, why don't you tell us what makes you qualified to take this role and what your highest priorities would be? Well, my uh, qualifications are, I done my postdoctorate out in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I've been a businessman. I lived here in Chattanooga my whole life. Been a businessman for 30 years. I've been in the development sector and I do a lot of consulting for Colorado Springs, Colorado, and other municipalities across the nation. And my expertise is dealing with legislation that comes from like Washington, D.C., things that come down. Building codes is, 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 is basically the hub of what I have been doing for these, these uh, municipalities. Um, but the main thrust what I'm trying to do is uh, what's gotten so popular for me um, is we got to get back to trade schools. You know, when the county took over the city schools back in the 90s, uh, the trade schools just basically went into like mothballs, okay? Nothing's being done. And we got to come up with a sustainable economic engine because we have put a mass amount of effort on revitalizing downtown and it looks beautiful but i'm afraid that we're not going to be able to support it and so we're going to have to get a sustainable economic engine as fast as possible and the only way we can do this is we've got to put people back to work on a big scale and this program that i'm talking about is going to take care of a whole broad broad gamut of social issues that we have in Chattanooga that everybody's complaining about. Uh, homeless, you know, they're, they're going to be qualified. Recidivism as far as uh, repeat offenders and stuff, they're going to be in. If you're a violent offender, you won't be qualified for this. Now, as far as the homeless aspect of it, we'll have to put some kind of restrictions on it, merely based on we can't have folks from Hackensack, New Jersey, and Florida coming to our program because it's going to be that powerful of a program so give an example this program here is going to be revenue neutral for the city we're just going to have the initial cost up front but my expertise in developing and building that will be won't be as bad okay we're going to have to address affordable housing Our affordable housing has gotten way out of hand and we need to build on scale Okay, and the only way we can do that is we're going to have to be a cooperative effort with the private sector and the local city government. The um, uh, city council is going to have to really get involved in this because there's going to be special zoning for this type of thing right here. So it will not interfere with what we got going on now as far as the new development. Uh, but we can do it on a big scale like that. But we have to have trained workers. We don't have any trained workers. Plumbers, electricians, carpenters. I want to get into 3D printing on a big scale because when we have a good workforce base, manufacturing will be coming on droves. That's the reason why we don't have all, we got 6,700 acres out here at Enterprise South. It's not being utilized like it should be done. Our roads are terrible. We got millions of dollars worth of equipment sitting down there at Public Works. It's not even being used. We outsource it for some crazy reason. I don't know. And we're not getting the bang for our buck. We need to raise our budget. I'll raise our budget on our road, but not as significant as these other candidates are saying because we won't have to because if we do it ourselves, we can save a mass amount of money. Okay, okay so instead if you're of ready. outsourcing it. I'm oh, sorry. Instead of ready. outsourcing it, yeah. Okay, we'll move on to the next questions and we get into a lot of what you mentioned um, in right. specific questions. So the first few questions will be about the budget. Um, and the first question is the city is estimated to lose $8 million in revenue this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As mayor, how would you balance a difficult budget in FY 2022 or after under the stress caused by COVID? Right. And you know, see that's a difficult thing that I'm gonna have to adjust, but see, this is what I'm trying to get 
on <clears throat> we have a year roughly before this comes to comes to tuition okay then we're going to have to really address it and i got that year to really promote and get this thing off the ground okay so that would be in our favor uh and you know i think that we can probably get something out of somewhere else wiggle it in there but really focus on the people that really are in need and and address those issues i don't want to forget about anybody i'm trying to get revenue for these programs and i'm afraid we're that's the, pro the whole problem that we're going to do is we're we're going to be running out of money for this kind of thing so there's a lot of people that need their services there's people out here that uh, they can't help themselves and they and they need to be our veterans people the homeless people you know people with housing issues and stuff like that it's just it's 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 a big scale project what i'm talking about doing but we can do it and i have the skill set to do it got it as we near a year since the virus hit chattanooga businesses and individuals within the city are struggling due to COVID-19 as well. How would you provide aid to those businesses and families hit hardest by the pandemic's economic impact? And are there any current programs that you would keep or any new programs that you would add? Well, I don't know if I would be adding any new programs right now. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to work with the small businesses people in a way where we can work with the county. It's gonna be have a joint uh adventure right here we're going to have to work with both to work this out here um and see what they can have to offer to the table it just can't be relied on the city because it the business side of it is a part of the county too you know they're about their thing so i'd have to be getting together with the with uh, mayor Coppinger and sitting down and seeing what we can do with that but that is a very important thing and you know uh, we need to free up a lot of regulations for new start businesses. There's a lot of new start businesses that does not even hit off the ground because of our regulations that we got to take care of. And that's not only speaking to COVID, okay? So that's other issues that we need to address, building issues and that type of thing, you know, that we need to really, it's cost prohibitive for a lot of small startup businesses. But we got to, uh, I want to promote black business districts down on the south side, Alton Park. Alton Park's got a lot of potential for manufacturing and small business startups, especially right down on 38th Street. Excellent location for it. East Chattanooga on Glass Street. There's not been that much of an issue going on with them. They're not, they're not, it's, it's like their funds are dried up over there. They had something going, but there's either somebody's lost interest in it or something. I don't know what the deal is. But I want to look into that because that's a historic area and then we need to promote small businesses and then get it off the ground. And, and you mentioned this part as well, but paving and transportation consistently rank at the top of citizens' top concerns um, in annual studies done by the city. What transportation or infrastructural goals would you have if elected? All right. I would sit down and look at a comprehensive plan. We've got some local business people here that have a, a cost effective way of doing transportation. It's called tra uh, personal transportation system. And it's a lightweight scale <clears throat> transportation system that works on a grid on solar. And it's, uh, it's got a lot of promise to it. And then they have the bigger nationwide uh, setup that is spending millions of dollars called uh, SkyTran. And that's something I would really look at about as far as bringing high speed uh, nonstop from Atlanta to Chattanooga so we can get our airport on more domestic flights just around here. We need more domestic flights. And there would be a good cooperation for uh, Atlanta airport because Atlanta airport can build a little bit bigger. That's no problem, but they can't get any more airspace. So they're having to get a lot of domestic flights coming out from like Charlotte, Birmingham, and Chattanooga. So if we get a high-speed rail system that this thing, SkyTran, provides would be excellent. And, you know, we can get 4,000 people a day in Chattanooga and direct flights out. So, and then our roads, we need to have those fixed. These potholes around here are ridiculous. And we and we can put a lot of people to work right there in that department there with public works. And uh, so we got to have tradespeople. So the next few questions are about business and the economy. 
Um, city labor unions and many activists support a $15 minimum wage for city employees, which the current mayor had intended to implement before COVID. Do you support this or any other specific pay increase for city employees? Why or why not? Yeah, I'm, I'm promoting that because that's the problem that we're having right now. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit disturbed with the, uh, uh, the city union and the fire department union. They're, I don't think they're given the best representation for the firefighters or the city employees. Um, you know, uh, you know, they haven't even issued them a raise, you know, four years ago, last time they got a, a, a raise for the city of Chattanooga was back to the, uh, Mayor Kimsey administration. That, that's not representation and they take their these folks money every week okay so uh they they need to be in front of me okay and so we can see what the needs are the fire department the first responders and the city police they're you know they're they're not getting what they need they, they need more respect and because they're the first ones that call on us see, i live out here in east brainerd when we got hit with the tornado it devastated my house okay and I really appreciated what the fire department did for me and the police department. Police department was courteous that we had so much traffic out here from people out here on looking and stuff. And they was polite and courteous and they was cutting down on the people that's taking advantage of us. They was wanting to come in and rob and pillage us. You know, they was really respectful on that end like that. So kudos to those guys. That's definitely a call out for them. And they're not getting enough respect, yes. That was a little long, I know. So oh, you're sorry. fine. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, in 2019, 40% of Chattanooga's households were housing cost burdened, meaning that they pay more than 30% of their income for housing and may struggle to afford other necessities. How would you address affordable housing as mayor? Well, we're going to have to do affordable housing on scale. And like I say, it's going to be, have a, be a joint venture between the private sector and the city, okay? So the private sector will take care of it if they get the regulations moved out of the way so they can build something, okay? They're more than willing to do it and they're geared for it. They're set up for it. We can't have a nonprofit come in here and do the scale affordable housing that we need to do. It, it, they're just not geared for it. They're not set up for it. And we have to get the professionals in there, okay? So they'll come in and do it. But tradespeople is what they need to be able to do this. Okay, so if we have good trade people that works out here with them, it makes a good living wage, then they can accomplish this right here because they're going to do it on scale. They're going to do volume instead of uh, just making a big profit off one house, make a big profit off several houses, but just minimize the profit margin on each one of them. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. We're going to do it on volume. Got it. Um, a number of Chattanoogans are experiencing homelessness. How would you further the city's progress toward reducing homelessness as mayor? Well, this is where this uh, trade school program right here is geared for them. And what we'll do is we'll set up an area. Right now we're paying like $50 a night for uh, folks, for some homeless people to stay in hotels around locally. Okay, and there's a little program that's for that. And they're complaining about that. They'd rather be on outside site, like uh, uh, somewhere located downtown, preferably, but they don't have to be downtown. They're, they're not fixed on that. But they want, what, I, what I envision is taking like 25 acres. And I've done a lot of study on this and it will work out really well. Homeless people, the problem they have is they don't have what they call a residence, a place of residence. So they can't get any ID or anything like this. So what I would do is set up an area that would be transitional. And what it would do is it, like the first phase of it will be like a KOA campground type where they have electricity, they have bathhouses, restrooms where they can use the restroom like that, but they can set their tents up, but they got their own lot. Okay. And each lot I have assigned an address. And then they'll have, I'll have electric power board to provide them free Wi-Fi there. Okay, that, I figured that's something that we should need to do because most of them all have smartphones. They just need a Wi-Fi connection and, and with a Google app, they got, a, they got a phone. Okay, they're all set up to go. 
they're used to doing this all this time. So I've been out with them on a regular basis. I just, we had a good event this past Sunday with them, you know, uh, down on Broad Street, down on Workman's Road and everything. And I'm kind of concerned about the one at Workman's Road because it floods a lot. But, you know, we got to get these people in a, a good place and they got to have a little dignity, okay? They're not all, but we'll have caseworkers set up for them right there. This is a revenue neutral program also, okay? Because it ties into what I'm talking about on this big scan of, of trade schools that I'm talking about doing. They all fit into this program. So at any rate, you have caseworkers that they might be managing, they might have a drug problem. Some of them might be mentally ill and they can't work. But we still need to provide for those guys. But we'll have the money and revenue sources to do that with this program. Okay? That way they'll have a little bit of dignity. Then we'll go into micro housing at the next stage. And then when they get into this workforce thing, what happens is they're going to be working cheap. They're going to be working for $10 an hour. But they're learning a trade. Seven of it is going to go for their housing or any kind of fines they got or anything they got to do. Three dollars of it goes into a savings account for them. And then when they're done with their program, they'll have a little money for startup to be able to put deposit on a rental or a house or move into something bigger. Okay. And then that maybe afford a car. Might be a cheap car, but they can afford. But they'll have the money to do that. And they work many hours they want to. Okay, because this is a collaboration between the private sector and the city. Okay. The private sector, what I deal with, they need help so bad they can't see straight. They will love, they'll jump all over this program. Got it. Um, so downtown Chattanooga, which was once a so, uh, excuse me, which was once a showcase is struggling to hold on to businesses. How can that be improved and what factors have made downtown less appealing to businesses? Could the bid be at play? Yes, the bid played a big role on it. Um, um, Kim White was the one that brought that up to in there, and then it was followed through with uh, um, Mayor Kimsey. I was down there when it passed. I was at the city council. It was very controversial. A lot of the people that was pushing that are not even paying the, those taxes. So uh, that needs to be investigated. Okay, there's a lot of, of big players down there that are not even paying this. These other small businesses, but we got to cut that crap out. I mean, you know. Uh, I understand what they're 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 trying to do, but it, it's it's not necessary. Okay, and it, it's just a, another revenue stream that that prevents people coming down here. And then we have this COVID on top of this problem right here. That's not helping anything either. But our rents down there are really high. Okay, they need to be some kind of adjustment on that. Don't know how. That's going to have to be with the private sector. That's what they're going to have to determine. And that, and they'll come down. They're going to have to. But what I'm afraid of, we got so many uh, vacant places. We got a lot of uh, condos along the river there that are vacant, okay, because they're too high. And I'm afraid that one of these banks are going to call the note on it. And then when, when the one does, they all start going down. And then we're going to have a big problem, okay. And they know this is coming. They know it's coming. It's a big struggle for them. But the only way I know to fix this is we're going to have to get city of Chattanooga working. And got we it. can afford this kind of stuff. And we got to do it as fast as we can. Sure. We ain't got time to play. So the next few questions will be about public safety. And the mm -hmm. first question is Chattanooga saw a sharp increase in gun violence in 2020. How would you as mayor work to lower violent crime rates in Chattanooga? Yes, and that's unfortunate. I worked in the inner city. We started out a mentor group. We started out with six kids. We ended up with 68 in just in a few months. The trick to them is to get these young kids in there to eat. You got to feed them. So we got, we got together three other guys. One of them was Councilman Bird. Okay, he, he was a good role. With, we all worked together on that. We all pitched in. And we got kids coming all over the place. And then we had the gang members talking to them and trying to get them to stay away from the gang life. 
with they're letting them giving them examples of what you don't want to get into that was a good that was a good program but unfortunately it went to the wayside because one of our kids killed our preacher so then everybody lost interest in it and then, then it went away but i understand that but this trade school program is to cut down on recidivism there's people out here that that gets a, a non-violent offender you know a theft charge at Walmart or a dope charge, you know, or something like that. They get into the system, say they got to do 1129 out here at Silverdale. Instead of sitting out there in Silverdale on the county tax row, okay, we'll put them to work. They have the same setup, $10 an hour. They work for their trade. They have to be in every night, random drug testing, make sure everything's up to up on them and then it works the same program ten dollars an hour three dollars savings account the seven goes for their their housing and their fines okay because it's a revolving door down there and then when they're done with that program i'm a type of man i believe when you pay your debt to society it's over with your record's clean got it so this is how we, that we're going to do this, and it would have to start out of it. But the ones that are doing the violent crime right now, I will spare no expense to hunt them down. But I will not violate their civil rights in the process. But they will be put in jail because I'm going to let a lot of those others, the nonviolent offenders in this program, there's going to be room for them in there. Got it. Um, many activists spent this summer protesting police brutality across the country and in Chattanooga demanding defunding or divesting from the police. Would you consider defunding or divesting from CPD for reform? In what other ways, if any, would you consider law enforcement reform as mayor? Well, we're gonna to have to get back to basics on there. We're gonna to have to be out policing instead of in the patrol car, working the beats, or actually walking the area. I would like to get the uh, horse patrol back maybe. Because then people have a, an idea of talking to the police officer instead of talking through the window of the police car, which is intimidating. But no, I don't want to cut their funding at all. I mean, because the folks that are wanting the funding cut are the ones that call the police the most. And it don't make too much logic for me how that does. And we don't really have that systemic type of problem in in Chattanooga that I'm aware of. We got some isolated stuff because, you know, I'm, I'm a life member of the NAACP, so I get regular meetings and, and stuff that goes on with that. But uh, we have some issues that come up time to time again, but those need to be addressed and dealt with immediately and, you know, without question. But everybody, it has to be fair to everybody. But no, no, I would not do any, no funding. Uh-uh, no. Okay. Matter of fact, I'd give them a more. Many activists and some candidates have called for the removal of current high-ranking officers, including Chief Roddy. What, if any, changes to CPD leadership would you make? Well, Chief Roddy would definitely have to go. We're going to find somebody. We'll, we'll, we'll bring somebody from inside internal up to that thing, but it, it will be nobody that's a ranking officer. It's going to be somebody even lower than that. And it will be interviewed that somebody that understands what's going on. And some of the, uh, the old retiree, uh, McPherson, I think he needs to probably be recalled back in there. And I think he get him in, into a temporary step so he can find the exact person that we need to do that job if, he's, he's, if he still wants to retire. But I think he'd be more than willing to work with us. Okay. Um, many have questioned the conduct of activists given disruption to businesses, vandalism, and confrontations with police. Others have criticized law enforcement for restricting access to public areas, surveillance of activists while on private property, and the nature of some arrests. If similar unrest came up during your term as mayor, how would you weigh restrictions for activists and police presence? What would you have done differently? Well, you know, I would have an easy permitting process for them if they want to gather and you know make it relatively easy for them to do anybody wants to do it will have a permit process but it would have to be structured like that you just couldn't go bomb storm this one particular 
business here or, or disrupt this business. That's not fair. I understand you're trying to make a point, okay? And I know Marie Mott, she got the burn in the flag. That was unnecessary. That she had no business doing that. But she was trying to make, she's compassionate about what she does. She's sweet as she can be. And I really understand her. And I, she would be one that I would really like to work with because she's got the pulse of the community, okay? But we can't have this disruption of business, and it has to be fair and balanced. I don't want to cut back on anybody's freedom to write or way to express themselves, but don't harm any innocent people in the process. Got it. Um, and the last few questions are kind of miscellaneous questions. Um, the first one is, have you received a COVID-19 vaccine? And if not, will you when it becomes available to you? If they solicit to me, yes. But right now, the way it's structured here, uh, I'm, I'm going to lay low for right now and, and hope that somebody that really needs it better than me get it first. Got it. Um, do you believe transparency to be an important issue in the mayor's office? And if so, how will you ensure that continues through your term? Will you grant interviews with reporters and answer their questions on a regular basis? Yes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a uh, ongoing thing every uh, Thursday or Wednesday. I haven't decided. It's eat lunch with the mayor. All right, and anybody that I don't care, John Q. Public, who you are. I don't care if you're a homeless person or you're a big leader in the neighborhood. But I want a reporter there also to have lunch where we can sit back and be casual. And I want to hear from the community what their problems are, okay? And sit down and talk with them and see what we can do about it. And then transparency, that's, what is transparency? It's not going on here now, okay? We've got stuff that's going on. See, we've got to address the stormwater that, we're, that nobody's talking about. Our stormwaters went up 60% in the past five years. Our sewer rates have gone way out of whack. Nobody don't know how to fix it, but I know how to fix it. I can do it in three years. Be compliant with EPA. It's an easy fix. But nobody wants to fix it down there because it's a big cash cow, and nobody knows where all this money's going. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. It's supposed to be going for that, but it's not. And see, the problem I'm concerned is if we're going to get a big lawsuit because we're kind of going against the directive of the consent decree, what the judge ordered. The judge made a federal judge made an order on there that those funds were supposed to be only for stormwater related projects. And we're borrowing money from the state to do the projects. And we've always had that money. Got it. There's, there's, okay. That, I'm sorry. That, that, you... that gets, you, Get me started on stormwater. You know, that's my wheelhouse there. That's what I'm an expert at. So, you know, <laughs> you, we can peel this onion down to whatever we want to do here. I can tell you all about it. But, okay. see, but you know, I just, you know, like my water bill, I just pay $24 water bill, but my sewer is 113 mm. All right, people that has fixed incomes out here, how are they managing this? It's rough. And it's okay. unnecessary. Like my school where my son goes to school at over here, Silverdale. That school over there was four years ago was paying $24,000 a year in stormwater fees. Okay. That's a church. These, all these churches are paying big money for the stormwater and they're not exempt from it. Okay. And it's went up 60%. Got it. I have to get back on track if you don't mind. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you're totally fine. Um, so the next question is, what should the relationship between the mayor and city council look like? How will you cultivate relationships with city council members? City council members, uh, the, the group we have right now, um, I don't think would be a problem. What would be, see, what I'm afraid of, there's so many vacancies on the city council and everybody's running for this. There's going to be a big learning curve when they get into office because they won't know all the rules. So everything's going to be kind of jammed up. So 
we'll have to get down there and be patient with them and get them in order. And, and have, we got to get back into public hearings again. This Zoom thing's not cutting it, okay? I understand everybody's scared of the, of the COVID. I get that. But I think we need to take temperatures of people come in there and social distancing, but fill that place up and have our leaders in that forum again where people can come up and talk. We're not getting anything done. Uh, but the, working with the city council will, will be no problem that I see, you know. And I won't be like this current mayor we have down there strong arming him to get what he needs to do. You know, I'm going to be listening to those folks. And I'm, I'm thinking of, of on Tuesday night, there should be a seat for me there. I think that I would, I would like to do a stepping stone like that. And I don't think it's ever been done. A mayor needs to sit down there just like the county mayor does. He sits in his commission meeting. Why can't a city mayor do that? Sure. Got it. Um, so the last question is, do you support public funding for a new Chattanooga Lookout Stadium? Public funding? Well, see, that's more of a private institution. Um, I'd have to weigh out on some of that. I, I, I couldn't, unless I had more specific information, I, I can't really give you an honest assessment on that. Okay.